What's up, everyone? I am here with John Gamester81. Thank you for sitting down with us. Hey, thanks for having me. Um, this is well, the third video now, part of this series. I apologize for the weird lighting. We found a little secluded, quiet place at Retropalooza. It's a nice mood lighting, man. Yeah, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> I, there's no one in here, so I'm a little frightened now. Uh, you guys asked a bunch of questions on the Facebook pages, and I'm going to get to reading those. Uh, he has not seen any of these questions I have yet. Not. So uh, hopefully, kind of, kind of a bit nervous. Yeah, no. hopefully they're not too bad. <laughs> we'll start off, I guess, with a, with a simple one. So, okay. Uh, Kirkland Kovac, what do you guys think of the younger generation of kids uh, in their teens that are keeping retro games alive and coming up? Dude, I think it's awesome. I mean, I think even not just the teenager, I think it's cool, like the preteens, even like the six, seven, eight year olds who are yeah. getting into, I mean, shoot, at this convention, there's been a lot of kids walking around with Mario shirts. Exactly, and, yeah. And it's super cool. The panel, like a lot of the panel was younger kids. You awesome. Know? I mean, they, if if it's something, obviously, parents are trying to introduce their kids to, yeah. and trying to bring their kids into what they were doing as uh, when they were younger, so that's yeah. it's awesome. I mean, it, it's like music, right? I mean, we, exactly. I appreciate the older music, like Beatles, even though I was never alive when that was around. Yeah. I appreciate and listen to it. Same thing with games. I think it could pass on. Yeah, if, if some people, some people get negative, like, you know, they're not, they don't know, they don't know my stuff from when I was a kid. It's like, well, you, know, you have to teach them. They're yeah. not going to know. They weren't alive then. Right. Doesn't uh, mean they can't respect it like you can. Exactly. You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Miguel Garza, what was his first gaming system? Uh, what got him started into collecting? My, so kind of two different questions, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. So what was my first gaming system? Was the ColecoVision. Okay. Uh, hence why I'm big into ColecoVision today. It's very nostalgic <laughs> for me. Yeah. Uh, as far as what got me into collecting, I've been collecting for a long time, man. Probably since junior high, to be honest with you. I think what got me into collecting was probably the Super Nintendo. Okay. And like the 16-bit era. So Super Nintendo, the Genesis, the you know, remember the 16-bit wars? Stuff. So, Gamester is, is a little older than I am. So like yeah. Coleco wasn't out when I was younger, so that's one of the reasons why I like Atari and Coleco... I don't have that same, obviously, nostalgia right. pull for me. Right. Like, Atari going into Nintendo is sort of where I, I started, sure. basically. Sure. We have Hans Hansen. What was the most excited you've been to acquire a game or console? Uh, so I guess the f best find you've had that you got really freaked out about. Okay, so I was at, uh, a couple years ago, I was at a uh, Goodwill. And I don't usually find much stuff at Goodwills. I'm pretty bad. The Goodwills by me are terrible. Uh-huh. But I found, uh, I was just looking, and, and if, a, a good hint for Goodwill hunting is if you go to, like, the DVD section, sometimes there's games in there. The CD rack CD and rack, stuff, yeah. Or if you go to, like, VHS area, sometimes there's games stuck in there. Yeah. So I was at the VHS area, and there was, like, a freaking Pokemon Red Game Boy sealed. Oh, I remember that. I remember you talking <laughs> about it. And I paid, like, yeah. eight bucks for it. Yeah. <laughs> it was unbelievable. I remember you did it. And it had, video. like, the whole age. I mean, it was a legit Nintendo yep. seal. That's awesome. In perfect condition, so it was awesome. Um, Louis Navarrete. How big, how has bigger hands, who has bigger hands? He has put how has bigger hands. Who has bigger hands, him or Dr. J? Okay. You ever, have you never gave a high five to Dr. J, the basketball player? I have not given a high five to Dr. J. But <laughs> we'll have to get that to happen. I have so pretty big hands. He does have some big gloves on him. Um, Michael, Miguel Walter, uh, where have all the Cowboys gone? I think they've gone here in Texas. That's true. There's literally <laughs> a Cowboy <laughs> game right now, like right across the street. <laughs> I didn't even put those two together. Uh, Zach Fonin, how many licks does it take to get to the center of your heart? Uh, two. Two, that's, that's a quick man. <laughs> right to the point. Um, I'm not going to actually ask this, but Bano Video Games, what do you think about Mexicans? They're, they're great people. They're great people. Hard workers. Yeah, yeah, come on. I worked with a lot. I worked, my, one of my first jobs in high school was at Taco Bell. So I, worked I was going to say, their food so. is delicious. I love it. <laughs> Uh, They're awesome. <laughs> Mike Lodato, uh, what is your favorite full motion video game? Oh, FMV. Oh, wow. Oh, man. For, me, for me, there's really not a lot because yeah. most are horrible. Most are bad. I think uh, probably Wing Commander 3. Okay. Would be my. Because uh, you, got, you got full motion video with like real actors and stuff, yeah. and then you got full motion video that doesn't have necessarily the really bad like acting from yeah. characters. You, right. It's just more scenery. Right. You know? So I stay away from the ones that have, like, the actors and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Although Mark Hamill's not too bad in the week. Really. That's true. Yeah. Adam Castanendada. God, you guys' names can't... Where's the last name? Just simple. <laughs> Adam Castaneda. Ask Castaneda. him... Castaneda? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Ask him if he likes chopped up hot dogs or spam in his man and cheese. I'm assuming that was supposed to be mac and cheese, but you can answer both ways. Mac and cheese. 
Not, <laughs> I, that'd be good. Like, slice up hot dog would be good mac and cheese. I could go for that. I used to I do that as a kid. Yeah. In my man and cheese, I prefer no wieners. No wieners. No, no wieners hot dogs. in my man and cheese. <laughs> no, no, no hot dogs in my man and cheese. Uh, Steve, Tuna, maybe. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> good one, good one. Uh, Steve Jack. Um, ask him, does he like to trade games on Facebook? I do. If I have some spares, I'll be willing to trade. I used to sell yeah. on, online yeah. through like the Facebook and YouTube and stuff. I can't do it anymore. Right. It just got too overwhelming. You, you have to trust the other person too. Exactly. Yeah. But trading, I, I don't mind doing. I actually like doing the trades. So yeah. any, if anyone's watching this and you always wondered, I do still like doing trades. We look really scary. <laughs> <laughs> we have no eyeballs. Um, Shinobi Magus. Uh, thoughts on Trump, Donald Trump? Uh, I think he's very opinionated. He definitely speaks his mind, he that's for his sure. Mind. <laughs> Do you think he has a chance uh, in this country? <laughs> I don't know. I think it's be a hard haul, but I'm not, I'm not really, I don't like Hillary either, so I don't know what to think. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, Corey Stover, boxers or briefs? Oh, boxers for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think I, I answered you, Corey. I'm like, I, it has to be boxers. I can't do yeah, briefs. No. Um, what was Wood wearing the other day? Like this he is... wears, they're literally called alphas. He wears underwear that are like skin tight little package thing called alphas. And he likes to take his pants off. And that must be an Australian thing, huh? I, it must be. Or he's just a big fan of alpha. I'll make a sense. <laughs> One of them. <laughs> Steven Replays Moores asks, please explain the end of the Blair Witch Project. They die. Don't, it's been a long time since I've seen that movie. They but, do. They go down that little basement yeah. thing, and there's the one dude standing. Corner, in, just standing in the corner, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The the explanation is they should have had a better ending. Yeah. <laughs> and they shouldn't have had a part two. Or a part have, three. There was a part three. I didn't even realize it was <laughs> yeah. part Jesus. Uh, Tony Lynn, what are your thoughts on GI Joe, and do you have or have you collected them? I love GI Joe. Do you have a collection? Um, or? Yeah, from my childhood, I haven't gotten any recently. Although I did recently pick up Gentle Giant, which is a great website, and I pick a lot of those jumbo Star Wars figures out. Yeah, but they have a new GI Joe line of jumbo like uh, okay. vintage, which is really the cool. Like with clothing and stuff. No, or? like the plastic. Oh, they're with, plastic. Yeah, with the food? joints and stuff. Oh, okay. But they're done in like a twelve-inch scale. Okay. So I just did pick up like a couple of those. They're pretty sweet. That's cool. Yeah. So no. I do like GI Joe. It's Tony cool. knows I've never been into GI Joes. Yeah. Like uh, all American hero, man. Ninja Turtles. That was sort of my action figure, and Mighty Max. I loved. Mighty Max. That was that was would have been. Do you remember Mask? Yeah, I do remember Mask, Mask also. Pretty cool. Hey man, <laughs> I have the power. <laughs> Matt Amer. Yeah. Tell him to come to Nanuet, New York, and document the Nanuet Arcade for his arcade channel. Okay. It's not a question, but it's a more of a demand. Yeah, demand. <laughs> okay. You better go there. I better go, or else. Yeah. Sounds cool though. I'm, I'm digging arcades. <laughs> uh, David Spaulding. Why does he think Neo Geo was never a major part of the collecting community, considering the people who were around when it came out are now buying arcade machines? I think the Neo Geo, I think they really priced themselves on the market back in the day. Yeah. They were super expensive. I was trying to explain to someone recently that there were systems that were designed for the normal consumer. Right. And then there were, like, collector hardcore systems. Sure. And the price points were $150, $200, 500 to $700. Like they I mean, were you're talking a couple hundred dollars per game back yeah. then. And like, if you include inflation, that's that's like three, four hundred dollars a game today. Exactly. And that's just just a completely different market, and that's why they didn't sell. Because there's yeah. not as many hardcore collectors as there are people that go to GameStop oh, and buy I have bad love for the Neo Geo, though. Mm -hmm. And I, I recommend if you do collect on the Neo Geo, get the MBS games again the consoleized MBS yeah. because it's much cheaper to collect MBS cartridges than it is AVS. What do you mean? You want to play like a thousand dollars for metal or slugs? Or AES, I should say. What's up? <laughs> you want to pay a thousand dollars for the metal slugs or something? Not necessarily. <laughs> but you get the same game for yeah. 50 bucks. I'm, yeah. Uh, Alex, uh, sorry, this is going to be a bad one. Ginopoulos. I hope that's right. How high are his hopes for Star Wars Episode Seven, mm. um, and where will he consider watching the movie for the first time? And all the different options we have these days. Yeah, so there's a big IMAX uh, theater where I live, so I'll probably want to see it on IMAX at midnight. Okay. Yeah, so I'll definitely see it there. I'll go. I don't know if I'll see it on day one, yeah, but I'm, I'll, day one. I'll for sure go see it. As far as hype, no, I'm super excited for it, but I'm not like one of those fans who'd be like, because I feel like with Episode One, people <laughs> were like super excited about it, and then it yeah. just. Yeah. Couldn't live up to expectations. Deflated. It, impossible. So I am very optimistic and very excited about it, but I'm not like like crazy, ambitious, thinking it's going to be the best movie ever. I, I'm, so. I'm looking forward to all the physical props and effects yeah. that they've been talking about. So that's one reason why I really want to see it. Can I make a theory? Yeah, yeah. I think Han Solo's going to die. You think Han's going to die? Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah I think well, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. Chewie would live, though. 
Chewy lip, although in the yeah. books they killed Chewy off in the books. But so maybe they'll do a little reversey kind of thing. So I, just, I think they're going to make Kana martyr. <laughs> That's not just my theory. I think, yeah. Jack James Cooper, he asks, why are you such a gentle giant? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I was born that way. I was born that way. I think, uh, no, I just uh, got it from my father and my parents, you know. Yeah. yeah I mean, you got, the, you got the nice, soothing voice. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Puts me to sleep. <laughs> uh, John Eric Augustine, Gamester, what video game are you the best at? That's actually a question that not many people ever ask. Like, What's your favorite? You know, blah, blah, blah. What are you best at? I'm really good at Super Mario Kart. Okay. Which one? The Super first Nintendo? one. For the Super Nintendo. Okay. Uh, and I'm really good, and especially the battle mode. Like, I'm killer at battle mode. Uh, yeah, I, was, I suck at racing games in general. Yeah. But that was, and I guess that mode was a little bit more fun for me, because it wasn't just, oh, yeah. I'm getting left behind. I could still do stuff, you know. Right. Generally, like, first-person shooters are not really good at, but when it comes to, like, Goldeneye for the N64... Really? I sucked at that one, too. Really? You're good at everything I'm not It's all at. about, like, Odd Job and going up and, like, bitch slap. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Odd Job the character that people don't like when you... Right. Because yeah. <laughs> he's so short. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Albert Sandoval. Which gaming Sandoval. community YouTuber do you watch the most? Who's your favorite? Well, I can't pick a favorite. Man. Yeah, so take out the favorite part because that's just you know favorite too. Who do I watch a lot of? Um, I watch a lot of your show, man. For okay. Sure. I watch a lot of Pete. I watch a lot of uh, Johnny Millennium. I, Constant Gamer. Johnny was one of the YouTubers that got me into caring about yeah. doing gaming stuff. Like, yeah. Uh, he just had such like every video. I knew it, I knew I could expect positive, uh, really good. You know, like either. Giving me information, reviewing stuff, whatever it right. was, I was going to be interested in. It, right. you know. So he was one of my first. I mean, there's, there's a lot, man. A lot of great shows. Uh, Retro Liberty is a great show. Obviously, the Game Chaser is a good show. I mean, there's a lot. So, yeah. Um, Rocky Wright Brett Berger. Jesus, Rit Berger. <laughs> What is your... You're butchering like every freaking name on here. Last names are not my forte, apparently. <laughs> Can we just have a Smith? Yes, yes. <laughs> what is your 9-to-5 job? Okay, so I'm a, I'm a field marketing manager for a, for a franchise. I won't name which one, but <laughs> I, uh, I do a lot of traveling and work with uh, the franchisees to kind of local store market their, their store. Okay, yeah. cool. Shane Hickok, uh, what do they say about mig men with big hands? Uh, big gloves. And you give really, really hard high fives when they hurt. Good handshakes. Yes. Uh, it's the feet that other. That's the big hands thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Justin Heath, is there a game console or computer that you have yet to add to your collection? <laughs> there. Well, there's more of an attachment. I'm looking for. Um, it's a laser active. You know, like yeah. what to have. But there's a there's a um, adapter for like a um, what do they call it? Pack, like a pack. And uh, I have that Genesis one, but there's a Turbo Graphics 16. Oh, really? Pack that came with. They could purchase in addition to Laser Active, so it would allow you to play Turbo Graphics 16 That's games crazy. on your Laser Active player. Uh, and I don't have that. Turbo is one of my things I love collecting the most for. And there's like I just picked up a Turbo Graphics 16 CD player this weekend. Oh really? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking for. There's a pro duo out there that I really wanted out on the sales floor. The guy was asking crazy five hundred dollars, and I was for like, loose? Do, do Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, crazy five hundred dollars, and then I opened the little turbo or the chip U card door, and it was broken off. So I was like, "Fuck, I'm not even gonna bother," you know. All I saw was just the console. Does it come with like the adapter? It has a cable and a okay. controller. Yeah. The one I bought today though has a there's modded to play Japanese games too. Like you switch. See, it. I don't want a modded one. Yeah. I want straight factory. You know, come yeah. out of you know, but Fair enough. not for five hundred dollars. No, here. Uh, let's do one more. Um, Patrick Sullivan, what's the rarest game uh, in your collection or the most expensive one? Hmm. Well, rare doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive. Exactly. I guess it's two different questions. Probably the rarest game I have is I have an Atari uh, Lynx uh, prototype game. Okay. It was uh, it, Actually, you know, it was for the, the Atari Lynx, and it was uh, Alien vs. Predator that never came out. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, and it's a prototype. That's cool. So I have that. So that's, that's rare. Um, probably not the most expensive game because does it play like yeah but it's not finished okay but it's really cool because it kind of simulates the first person you know yeah the links which is really sweet so that's cool as the most valuable game I have I have a sealed Zelda Ocarina of Time okay that's yeah. in really good good condition for for me uh, the probably the rarest well I don't know the most expensive one I have is Magical Chase oh yeah on the turbo and yeah. then Rare, I got a lot of really, I don't do, I collect only like 
licensed stuff, stuff that really actually came sure. out. So, I mean, other people's collections blow mine away in that sense of, oh, there's two of these in the world. Right, right. I don't have anything that's two in the world. So, right. I have uh, the Dynastic Hero for the Turbo, which is, okay. like, even less printed than Magical Chase. So, nice. those are mine. Nice. I forgot to ask Gamester my questions that I'm trying to ask everyone I do a Q&A with. There's three questions. Um, I ended up having to call them on the phone just a couple days ago so I could get them uh, and put them in this video last minute. Um, the first question is, what would you be doing with your free time if you weren't on YouTube making videos? Uh, and he said, playing games, actually beating games, watching movies, or hunting for Star Wars figurines that he doesn't have because he's a huge Star Wars nerd. Um, the second question is, what turns you on? And uh, obviously everyone always goes for the sexual route with this one, but he actually said, you know, like meeting cool people, and then he's like, in a, in a non-sexual way, like just talking with people and stuff, so. Uh, and then the third question is, what is your favorite curse word? And everyone has answered so far that I've done a QA and a with, uh, they've said, fuck. Well, he said, fuck balls as his first one. And then he was like, well, wait, I also like the word douche. Does that count? I was like, I guess it depends on how you use it. It could count. So those were his three answers to my three questions. And uh, thank you all for watching. There will be more of these Q&A videos coming, hopefully fairly soon. So keep an eye out for them. Peace.